Hi everyone, welcome back at Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. Every once in a while, I like to give you a tour of one of the rooms in our house. Today is one of those days. I am super excited to share this living room, dining room makeover that I did as a featured designer for the One Room Challenge. Let's go. So here's the thing. We are renting, which means I was definitely limited in the changes that I could make in our rental. I could certainly change some of the furniture. There were a couple of pieces like this green couch that I really had no interest in getting rid of, so I had to work around that. But I still think I made some significant changes to this room. I am thrilled with how it turned out. The first thing that I took care of in this space was this accent wall. Now, it looks like wallpaper. It is wallpaper, but here is my hack. When I am applying wallpaper in a rental, I use liquid starch. I don't use pasted wallpaper, that is super important. So if you get plain papered wallpaper, this is how it looks if you use liquid starch, you apply it the same way you do regular wallpaper. And I love how this looks. It sets up the entire room. It's the first thing you see when you come into the space. I really love the greens and the blues. And this was a real springboard for everything else that I had going on. I also wanted something sort of fun to put up on this wall, but I didn't really want artwork because I was worried that it would block the accent wall. So I worked with a neon company. They made this, it's LED, so it won't get too hot. There's nothing dangerous about it. And I love it. It is very, very pink. I have this neon light plugged into an outlet that works off of a remote control. If you have an Amazon Alexa, you can also use that to control lights like this, but this is a really fun piece. I had these chairs already. These came from a flea market, so I simply recovered them. And they're sort of fun. They worked on this side of the room, so I moved them over. We have a whole new table setting, which I think is much more contemporary, and it doesn't feel quite as bulky as the chairs and table that we had before. This table is from Raymore and Flanagan. I love the wood tone. I love that it has sort of a sleeker line. And then I wanted to have fun, so I brought in these clear pink ghost chairs. I have some yellow chairs that haven't been delivered yet. So for now, I just have these Ikea ones. And then the rug is Magnolia Home from Laloy. It's a subtle pink so that it still brings up some of the pinks in the space, but it doesn't compete with the really bright graphic rug that I have in the living room. This gallery wall might be one of my favorite places in this space. I went with a bunch of assorted portraits there, most of them from Minted. They're from Juniper Biggs, Haley Mitchell, and I just love the way they all go together. Underneath the gallery wall is that bench, and the bench is important to me because I made it. I will link to the video tutorial for this bench. It is a channel tufted waterfall bench. I made the frame, then I upholstered it, and I love how well this works with the rest of the space. It has a slight pattern, which I love, but it's not so big that it competes with the beautiful artwork, and overall, this makes me very, very proud. This fabric is from Spoonflower, as is all the fabric in this space. So thank you to them for working with me on the One Room Challenge. I always find something that I love on their site. Did I mention how much I love my ladies over here? One of the changes that I made to this space is that this used to be sort of a big gray sideboard. I had a large mirror over it. I had a couple paintings on either side and it just felt really cluttered. There was a lot. So I actually got this brass shelf from my friend Erin. She is also a featured designer for the One Room Challenge. And I love that it feels a lot lighter against this wall. So I had to style this shelf. Styling always makes me a little intimidated. My friend Matthew is a professional stylist. So I was able to send him pictures he was able to talk me through some tips and tricks. The biggest piece of advice that he gave me is just to remove all the things. So if you don't know what it is from the camera, then get rid of it. So he had me take out some of the smaller fussy details so it feels much easier to sort of negotiate. He suggested that you sort of want to bring your eye back and forth across the shelf. So notice that I've tried to balance out this really large black head. I love this piece but I had to balance it with sort of black items elsewhere throughout the shelf. 
we wanted some height to be in here. So I was able to bring in accessories from places like Home Goods and TJ Maxx, and I mix them in with these really wonderful quality accessories from Lamps Plus. I have some artwork from Minted. Jill Rosenwald made this beautiful bowl for me, and I am in heaven. This bowl is such a featured piece, so I wanted this front and center. But I think this shelf looks really fun, and I love that it's just a little bit of whimsy in the space. So this is a really fun addition. I love the various textures that are going on in this space, the natural woods, and then it's hard to see, but back in there is a really fun thrifted piece of art that I added. So I'm really pleased with how these shelves came out. The armchairs on either side of it, I already had those. They came from an estate sale. I had them recovered, but I have a spoon flower pillow on there just to add a little bit of texture. These sconces are from Hudson Valley. They're part of their My Mitzi line. I love them. I also love that they plug in so I could hang them up. I didn't have to worry about wiring. Obviously we're renting, so I couldn't just put an electrical box in there, but I have these connected to the same remote control as the neon light, and they are a really fun addition to this wall and I love that they bring out the gold and the black. These are perfect. So one of the things I haven't talked about specifically is the addition of these curtains. The fabric is from Spoonflower. I was able to thrift the curtain rings. I spray painted them black and then I'm working with Lux Holdups. They sent me those gorgeous acrylic rods and the brass rod holders, but I love those in particular. I wanted to go with Lucite because these ceilings in the rental are really low, and so I was worried that a rod would sort of cut off the visual. I love that because of the Lucite rod, it allows your eye to go almost up to the ceiling with these curtains, so nothing is cutting off the vertical. And again, my goal was to trick the eye into thinking that these ceilings were higher than you know, I think they're not even eight feet. And then again, this fabric from Spoonflower is heaven. The rest of the space is really bright and colorful, and so I wanted something that was a little bit heavier and maybe a little bit more serious and grown up. So black and white seemed like kind of the obvious choice. These are egrets, and I love them, but I couldn't leave them alone, so I reached out to Fringe Market, and they sent me these beautiful, chunky, chunky five-inch tassels. This green is perfect. So this curtain situation is amazing. And one thing I haven't mentioned is that I didn't want to mess around with the existing shutters. I was worried I would lose them, they wouldn't go back on. So they're still hiding under there. Again, if we owned the house, I would take these shutters down immediately, but we don't, so this was a really easy solution. You don't even know they're back there. This is one of my favorite DIY projects in the space. I already had this bench and I actually already had it upholstered in this lovely rose color. I had some black fringe and it was just behind me on this wall, but I wanted something that would go here other than another pair of chairs. So I thought about doing a love seat. I was worried that the love seat would kind of take up too much room and it might cut off the living room from the sunroom. And so a bench seemed like the obvious choice with an open back. I made these two bolsters and I made a strap that wraps right around the bench. It attaches with a snap so this can come off easily. I sewed some contrasting piping and this is a really fun kind of color blocked piece that I think will be perfect. It can seat two people. And again, I was able to use maybe two yards of fabric to bring this all together, which I got at a local discount fabric place. And this is a really, really fun detail that brings in the color without competing with the pattern that's already going on in the rest of the space. I often get questions about this rug and I feel terrible because I purchased this six years ago at a local rug outlet and I'm still convinced they had the wrong tag on it. It's to this day one of my favorites. You'll notice that a lot of the colors in the space I pulled from this rug and I really love it. So unfortunately, I don't think this is a rug that you'll be able to find today, but it is a showstopper. I didn't want to get rid of my Ikea couch. I love the green, I love the shape. It's really comfortable. So the Ikea couch stayed there, and we didn't really have too many other ways to arrange the furniture in this space. We really wanted the dining room to be down there, and if I turn around slowly, you'll see that there's a fireplace on this end, and so it made sense to have this be the seating area. And there's two doors coming into the living room, so we sort of had to keep the two walkways free. 
In other words, this was kind of the only way the furniture could go. But I did add these two chairs from Raymore and Flanagan. I love that there's that same channel tufting, so it sort of echoes the bench that I made. I actually love that they're neutral, and I have just a faintly pink marbled throw pillow on there. That may change, but for now, I love that it's just a little bit of a pink, but it's not contrasting too much with the white of those chairs. This coffee table is from Facebook Marketplace. I believe it's Jonathan Adler. I love this Lucite tic-tac-toe game. Tic-tac-toe was one of my kids' favorites. So now we can play it anytime we want. Another thing that was tricky in this space is that if you notice the couch is lined up to be centered on the mantel, but the dining room has to be centered on that wall in order to leave room for the doorway. And those two things are not the same center point. So it is what it is. But this is another view of that dining room. I just love this right here. I love that there's that pop of yellow. I didn't mention that chandelier up there. I will also include the link to that tutorial. That chandelier is another DIY. It was under $50 and it is not electric. You're gonna have to click over and see the video. That works off of a remote control. It is hanging from the ceiling, but there are no wires, no electrician needed, and it doesn't take up too much visual space, but it still is a little something to bring your eye up to the ceiling. I love the idea of having a hanging light over our dining room table, so I'm really excited about that. How pretty does that look? I'm so excited about this space, you guys. Thank you so much for coming through this space with me. I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about my design process. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the DIYs that went into this space. I have tried as much as I can within the parameters of the rental house to make big changes. Obviously, I couldn't change the architecture. I couldn't change the floor. I couldn't change the electric. But I was able to add quite a few details that work within our lease, and I love the way it turned out. So. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a great day, everyone.